All right, so this is slides 100 through 130 on the unit six um, notes. This is, we had a snow day, um, and so I went over them on the B cohort, but the A cohort um, didn't hear me in my wonderful talking. Um, so I'm gonna go through these real quick. And so there's a few ways that we can edit RNA. And so uh, we talked a little bit about splicing and we talked a little bit about like recombining things and sort of we had sections that we take out and then we squash some together and we put little like poly A tails and different stuff like that on it. But then there's also other little things that are technically RNAs that can affect how the messenger RNA sort of moves from the nucleus out into the cytoplasm and then gets goes through uh, translation. And so microRNAs are just one of those things. Um, and so I'll, I'll show you the picture. Um, it's on the next slide. It makes a little bit, I hope, think it makes this stuff make a little bit more sense. But we have these parts and we have a little um, micro, what's called a micro RNA, and then it can um, bond to certain places and then it can do a couple of things. One, maybe it blocks it and so that it can't go and do its job and turn into a protein or maybe it makes it uh, sort of all fall apart because the structurally it's not really what our body expects or um, wants. And so it then if you can't get so from like point A to point B, then we can't make the protein or whatever it was that it was going to um, uh, code for. Another one is RNAi, which is um, RNA interference. And so sometimes, um, like there's been experiments in the past that that they might want to make, like an example of a um, of one is like the a florist wanted to make a super purple flower, and so we took the little segment of for like purple from the messenger RNA, and we made a bunch of copies of it. We sort of shoved it in there, hoping that we would, if we could make more pigment, we could make more purple, and then we'd have a really purple purple flower. Um, but what happens is instead is when we put in little segments, little what are called small interfering RNAs, there's little bits that um, our body detects as a virus. And so then it detects something that it's supposed to destroy. So um, instead of making it super purpley, it actually destroys all the pigment or all the messenger RNA that or the uh, RNA that codes for that pigment. And we end up with like a white flower. Um, and so, uh, it's just one of those things where we sort of expected one thing but got another um, because of a weird kind of interruption to the messenger RNA transcription translation done to a protein. Um, and then this just talks a little bit about um, some examples. And then this part is talking about how um, we sort of silence or turn off or turn on certain parts and pieces of our DNA slash messenger RNA slash proteins. Um, to make an organism. And so we have, it's called differentiation. And so we started out as a little blob of embryonic tissue, um, kind of similar to each other. And we just sort of divided and made two and then made four and then made eight. Um, but then that has to turn into something else. We have to make like skin and muscles and bones and different stuff like that. And so our cells have processes that we can then um, turn it into specialized stuff. And that whole big sort of overarching sort of concept called uh, cell differentiation. And so as we um, look through these, um, it's just talking about the same thing, just definition. Uh, and then this is just a picture of sort of, we start out with a little blob and then we end up with something that has kind of specialized tissues. Um, and this happens in all animals, um, fish, chickens, people, everything. Um, we start out as a little blob and then we start to get stuff like eyeballs and a spinal cord and um, some squishy parts that kind of stick out both sides and different stuff like that. And so then uh, just some uh, vocabulary that goes along with that. Um, and then one thing that it talks about on this slide is uh, eggs. So like the, the mother's eggs. And so uh, in an egg versus a sperm, which is really, really small, there is cytoplasm and there is uh, different stuff. We talked a little bit about this with like mitochondria and mitochondrial DNA and that comes from the egg because the egg has the cytoplasm. So it's the same sort of cytoplasmic kind of thing but not really the same thing. And so there are things inside that egg cytoplasm that then leads to the development and differentiation uh, when you have a developing fetus or um, making a little person or frog or whatever. And so in the cell it has these little 
compounds, little molecules, they're called cytoplasmic determinants, and they are little things inside the egg that determine where they where we're going and so or or what um, sort of part of this cell versus part of this cell so I'll show you a picture and so this is uh, talking about that and so we have like these and th these things that sort of divide and then we have like this portion goes this way and this portion goes this way and then this portion has some some determinants this has different determinants and then it turns into different things um, and then um, the picture on the right hand side is just uh, if you look at that it's just um, showing you like the bottom parts versus the top parts uh, turn into different structures within a uh, an organism so maybe like um, the different uh, like layers of your uh, like intestinal tract or like the, we're going to make things that are sort of on the outside and on the inside so like the first thing that happens whenever we make a um, uh, animal is we make like a, a donut a really long donut with like a tube down the middle that eventually turns into our digestive tract and so that happens every single uh, animal in the same order whenever something develops um, and that's coded for and sort of controlled by uh, the DNA and so there's three parts of like the process of becoming the cell that it's supposed to be um, and so it's in and then it's called determination and then it's called differentiation and so um, that's just the three like we're gonna start this and then we're gonna lead the way and then we're gonna become something um, and then there's two cool things that that sort of happen um, whenever we're uh, sort of arranging the pieces and parts within the developing um, in an organism and so there's called pattern formation and then positional information and so pattern formation is when we have um, like the heart is at the top then we have our organs underneath we have two arms that come out from it um, and so they um, it happens because we our body our DNA as it moves and as it sort of gets next to other things and then gets next to other things and gets next to other things it develops things in response to what it's next to and so it can um, it sort of knows with chemical cues that um, this is what comes next and then this is what I'm going to sort of develop these cells into versus these cells into and then positional information um, is the the sort of information or what this calls cues that tell us where um, the we are and so when we talk about axes we're sort of like thinking like down the midline or we have like like far, close to our torso or far away from our torso um, and so where is it in relation to other things that have been formed um, and then it like we grow out relatively equally on both sides and we, how does that happen um, it's because the cells that are growing and developing know sort of what came before it and in response to that they sort of grow outward or grow downward or um, or finish growing whenever they're done growing so it's, it's a pretty cool like control to then give us sort of the form that we eventually have and if you sort of think about dogs or cats or um, like chickens if you're like real uh, imaginative or like frogs or anything we all have the same kind of setup we have a, a midline with the some sort of a spinal cord we have four limbs that come out um, and then our fingers are like maybe wings or different stuff like that are kind of five things um, that come out uh, from like a stick like something that had one and then two things um, and so all that stuff is formed um, through the same process of differentiation and where did we start where are we ending up and um, then we get to have like kind of similar looking things to other organisms because we're all animals and so then uh, this part talks about a cancer a little bit and so one of the things that we talk about when we talk about cancer is sort of uncontrolled cell growth or we might talk about mutations and so I'll talk about um, uh, stem cells for a minute two kinds of stem cells embryonic stem cells and then the stem cells that are sort of all the time in our body and they sort of live or hang out in our the long bones so like the our humerus and our femur and then also in our um, like our the our pelvis and so that's where all of our cells our blood cells come from it's where the sort of the the replenishment of the cells kind of it's like the the, um, the source of all of it and so if you 
um, like don't wear sunscreen and you get a sunburn, so then you like have to like replace your skin because you damaged it. If you um, uh, smoke and then you damage your lung tissue and so we need to replace it, it's hard enough for our bodies to replace things for 60, 70, 80 years the way it is. But when you sort of stress out your system and you make it replace cells more than it maybe wants to, then we're making it divide cells, we're making it replicate more than it wants to or, or was originally designed to. And so then that is more opportunity for mutations to accumulate. And so if you increase the rate of copying, if you increase the rate of replication, you're going to increase your uh, amount of, um, of mess ups, of mutations. And then over years and years and years, and then when you're old, um, then they accumulate. And so older people tend to get more cancer than younger people. Um, and so this is just talking about little things that we've already talked about um, as far as like tumor or different things like that. Uh, and then we talked a bit already about oncogenes and proto-oncogenes. And so these are things that cause uh, cancer. So if you um, think you have cancer and you might need to go to a cancer doctor, they're called an oncologist and they're called that um, because it came, comes from the same root word. Um, then this is just a figure that talks about um, how different um, things sort of copy and then maybe become something uh, that maybe it shouldn't. And then uh, this is just talking about um, how things can go wrong. We'll talk a little bit about the specifics as we go through. And so when we talk about cancer, sometimes it's, oops, something went wrong. Um, and But a lot of times, cancer is when we mess up the thing that's supposed to control the system. So when we talked about um, cellular communication, we talked about like the cell cycle and like there were checkpoints that we had to like stop at and say, are we ready? Yes, let's continue. Or no, we're not ready. So let's destroy the cell and start over. And so we have genes that suppress tumor formation. And so if we break the suppressor, then we allow it to happen. And so a lot of times with um, with uh, cancer, it's there's mutations within tumor suppressor genes. And there's a few that I'll sort of uh, mention and talk about as we go through. Then down at the bottom, pretty easy to understand. Um, but the way the things that tumor suppressor proteins work on, so then everything works the way it's supposed to. And so we have P53 on this one. We have RAS gene. Both of those are tumor suppressors. Um, and then this is just a little visual to go along with it. And then this talks again about uh, P53. And then in a couple, eventually we'll get to BRCA is another tumor suppressor. Um, that's the one that's associated with um, breast cancer. And so sometimes you can get like a little bit of damage. Like if you smoke like one cigarette in your whole life, or if you sm if you like get one sunburn, sometimes they say that's enough. Um, but, but like if you get sunburn after sunburn after sunburn or, um, or like uh, you smoke up cigarette after cigarette after cigarette, that's continuous and like really damaging um, things that you're doing to your body. And so it tends to mutate and mutate and mutate. And then we have like, then you get cancer, like a little bit of glitches our body can kind of control. But sometimes your body's like, I, I can't, I can't do all this. I could just give up a little bit. And then it can uh, sometimes develop into cancer. And so this is just, this is the BRCA gene that I was talking about. So just another little example. Um, and then there's different kinds of mutations. Um, and they're pretty easy. And so these I'll go pretty quick on. But a point mutation is like at that point, it, there is a change. And so like I took out the A and I put in a C or something like that. Um, so not that, not too big of a deal like difference wise but sometimes the even with like one little change a huge thing can happen and so like tay sachs is one letter is changed but it's a super significant genetic disorder where uh, the babies like don't live until they're like five or six they're that's that's their lifespan it's a terrible disease and it's a re it's relatively small um change and so sometimes a teeny change can be a huge difference but sometimes a um a big change can be a big, big difference too so it depends and so then this is just an example of that. And then we talk about uh, substitutions is the same thing as a point mutation. And then insertions and deletions means that if I have a strand of DNA and I insert a chunk in, um, or maybe I take a chunk out, the, the sort of rest of the strand has to shift. And so if I um, have my strand and I put a piece in, then my original strand has, gets like shoved. And so 
downstream of the insertion or deletion where I sort of had to shift my the remaining DNA sort of one way or the other that that the whole rest of the strand is uh, affected and so it's usually um, if we have an insertion or deletion sort of bigger problems um, occur because you messed up like the rest of your strand of DNA that is called um, oh this is just pictures that go along with it and so that with a uh, insertion or deletion uh, it's called a frame shift we're shifting the frame of the original DNA by either taking some or put, taking some stuff out so you sort of mess up the sentence for the rest of the DNA and then uh, sometimes uh, things uh, just happen and so uh, like when we made a copy and we just made a little mistake um, but sometimes things cause trouble and so mutagens are like cigarettes like carcinogens um, or uh, like uh, the like the rays coming down from the sun's sun that is those are things that cause mutations and so that like the agent that causes mutations sometimes it just happens and and evolutionarily mutations can be a good thing um, because sometimes there's a little glitch or a little change and then we turn into something a little bit better and then we it helps us survive and then it sort of becomes common and so but originally it was actually a little bit of a change and so um, it's just talking a little bit about the same thing just a definition of a mutagen and so that's it hopefully that makes a little bit of sense um, and I'll see you next week